It is 49ers Mock Draft Live time. We are going to engage and bring you into this mock. This will be our second live mock draft that we do of draft season so far. So we're going to be relying on you, the watcher, to help us make the ideal selections, not only for 31, but for the entire seven rounds, this is going to be interactive. So I expect you to come ready and prepared to mock with me right now. We got some other things to talk about as well, but the main focus of today's show is going to be Mock Draft 2.0. Let's go. Smash that like button if you haven't already. Love to see it. What is going down, SDS? It is time to get into that mock draft frenzy time but before we get into that we might actually have a move coming up here that could impact our mock draft well maybe maybe not let's talk about it um i think it's worth a conversation we'll get into our mock draft right after this but word on the street is former Third round draft pick by the Minnesota Vikings, Kellen Mond, will be trying out for the San Francisco 49ers at the local pro day that will be happening tomorrow, I believe it is, down at Levi's Stadium. Um, Quite the development here. Now, you know. Kellen Mond um, is a very interesting prospect. Um, you had, I mean, you literally had people who are paid to evaluate prospects professionally ranking Kellen Mond above Justin Fields and Trey Lance. And then you had guys like myself who had the opportunity to watch Kellen Mond at the Senior Bowl all week throughout practice and just came away like, I don't even know if you can draft this guy. Look, I'm even where look at how convenient. I'm wearing my Reese's Senior Bowl shirt that I got while watching this guy at the Senior Bowl. And my biggest takeaway from there was he is terrible. <laughs> and again, not to kick a man when he's down. That's not at all what it is. Part of the evaluation process of this whole scouting thing is to be able to identify how guys are going to translate to the next level. And you could see throughout a week of practice that what this guy was doing wasn't going to translate well to the NFL. And the NFL has agreed as he is uh, only made it one year with the Vikings after being a third round draft pick. Then He was on to the Cleveland Browns, and then last year, he wasn't even on an active roster. He was on the practice squad. Uh, So Kellen Mond, definitely overdrafted um, as a former third-round draft pick. I really do think he should have been, at maximum, a sixth-round draft pick. I think you could have taken a shot on some of the traits, maybe some of the upside, and you know, gone that route. But honestly, there was nothing that he showed, in my opinion, that was very redeeming. And But nonetheless, he will be trying out with the 49ers. And uh, maybe, maybe redemption story? I, I'm good for a redemption story. Um, uh, I wouldn't say he's similar to Dobbs. Um, I think Dobbs was drafted as a backup, and I think Mond 
people really did believe he had starting upside. Um, but nonetheless, um, he gets an opportunity. Uh, the 49ers need four quarterbacks heading into OTAs and training camp. So there is a chance he could wind up on the 49ers roster as the fourth quarterback. And like I said, I'm here for, for a good redemption arc. Um, you know, uh, I feel like I was correct in my evaluation of him coming out, but I'm all for flipping that and, and getting him back on track. And if he can be a contributor, if he could be someone – who makes the team on the practice squad. Hey, man, come through. It is what it is. Um, but up until this point, hasn't really been uh, something that has been, you know, ideal. Uh, but, hey, he gets a shot uh, to come in, maybe impress, and come through. So we'll see. We'll see what's going down with that. Uh, but not a ton of not a not a ton of news today. Um, we're we're definitely in that that point of the off season where it's pretty much all draft, and uh, we are going to get ready because the draft is coming up here in a little over two weeks. Like we said, we have the 49ers local pro day tomorrow, so. Um, yeah, that's, that's what we got cooking. So let's hop right in to our mock draft, shall we? Uh, let's get into it. Um, I'll ask you guys this in the chat. Do you want it to be your mock draft where we pull the chat? You guys make the selections or do you just want me? to do a live mock draft. I haven't done a live mock draft where it's been me just making the picks, explaining what I'm doing, doing that. The last time we did the mock draft live, we pulled the chat. I'm open to either. But like I said, I want this to be... I want it, you guys to be involved in this one way or the other. But if you guys want to be a part of it, let me know. I've got one vote so far for polling the chat got one vote for me <laughs> so right down the middle uh brandon says brad you make the picks uh i'll let you guys get some more input in here as i get the mock draft machine loaded up how about input with me picking all right let's do it all right, let's do it. So this will be a, a so I do want your input though. And you can yell at me if you hate my picks as well. But let's let's do it. So I'm going to use PFN for this one. I like to pop back and forth between PFF and PFN. One, I like having different boards. Two, um this one also offers trades. Uh, I think the trade element of this mock draft simulator a little bit better than pff but let's run it and let's see what we get um this particular one i don't know i don't know if i want to do a trade up i don't think i'm going to let's just see how the board falls and okay <sighs> last last time we did this we we pulled the we pulled the uh, the trade back. We did drop out from pick 31 to 30, uh, like 33, 34, something like that. I even uh, did a trade similar like this on Bleacher Report today. So I'm not going to do it. We're going to pick at 31 and let's see what we got. Oh, Byron Murphy, defensive tackle out of Texas is available. That's intriguing. Cooper DeGene, they have him as a safety. He's going to be a cornerback. I don't know why everyone keeps calling him a cornerback or a safety. Then you got the guys that I think are, are obviously going to be in hot uh, consideration, which is Kingsley Suamatia and Jordan Morgan. 
But you also have Darius Robinson at edge, Tyler Newbin. You got Lad McConkey. Devondre Sweat had a little bit of an issue that popped up. Zach Frazier. Um, my guy, Rook. We could try to see if we can get Rook later. Probably not. Um, but there are some quality options right here uh for the san francisco 49ers if they were to sit still at pick 31 and so again this has been the argument that i have made all draft season even before the 49ers went into free agency is at pick 31 i'm looking for impact i'm looking for a guy who is going to play and play often. And I've talked about this many times. Many of you guys look at me as kind of the resident 49ers offensive line expert. I would consider myself an offensive line expert. It's just a position that I truly understand to its core. And I, I get the nuances of it. When you look at Sua Matia and you look at Morgan, both have starting upside. But I don't look at either one of those guys as a guaranteed lock to start. Now, this could be the pick. Either one of these guys could definitely be the pick. And if they were the pick, I would be pretty, pretty happy about it. But there's also a world that exists where they don't start right away. And that could, I don't know. I don't know. Do I want that? But if this is truly the board. And this is how it's staring at me. It almost feels impossible to look at Byron Murphy, who will be considered undersized from a defensive tackle perspective. But I, you, if you know anything about me and how I go about scouting, I do not care about your perceived measurables as long as you can play. And Byron Murphy can play. And so if you're going to get this guy to plug next to Hargrave, replace Eric Armstead, I got to go here. I got to go defensive tackle, and I got to run to the podium and be like, Byron Murphy fell. All right, we're taking Byron Murphy at 31. Yeah, I get it. It's not, it's not the sexy offensive tackle pick. That many are looking for, but got to, man. I got I gotta get it. And if if you aren't familiar with Byron all that much, let's let's do a quick traits pull. I like I like to do trait pulls so we can watch just a couple clips and you can get an idea of what the 49ers would be getting in this scenario. And you can make the decision. Number 90 right here, right in the zero, head up on the center. You're going to watch him split that double, get up, make the tackle. Number 90 right here, head up on center, takes on the double team, still makes the tackle. That's what I want. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a guy who can take on doubles, who can be a presence, who can absolutely be an impact on the interior. And you can go out, you can get a, a Byron Murphy. Uh, I like that. I think that is a good selection uh, in regards to the value um, and also for a position of need, that's a guy who's going to play heavy snaps for the 49ers um, in year one. Uh, I, and I think I think you would be able to get a, a stellar, stellar performer. A uh, guy runs uh, sub four, uh, sub 540. He runs a 487. Um, he doesn't measure particularly well in any category. He's 
considered to be like he's six foot. He's not tall. He's 300. Think of kind of like DJ Jones. Getting kind of like a DJ. That you can just plot right in the of your defense and uh you can definitely you can definitely get some production out of that guy um he's phenomenal uh, in 13 games he had 13 tackles five assists uh with 19 stops 40 total pressures as a pass rusher 30 quarterback hurries and six sacks last year. This guy can rush the passer from the interior, and he can also take on double teams. That's what we're talking about. I'll take that. I think that's a, a phenomenal value right there. Uh, eh, I don't like any of these trades. Reject. All right. So now we could have punted on the defensive tackle and tried to attack them in this round. But to be honest, um, I think the value was too good there. I think you go with BPA in that scenario. And then the BPA in that scenario, you're finding a player who is a quality guy. So now we got to figure out based on how the board is laid out where we want to go. Do we want to go wide receiver? Do we want to go with the Malachi Corley right here, um, who the 49ers have shown interest in? He, sh I believe he's coming in on a 30 visit. Um, you could go tight end to try to uh, plug that tight end to hole. You could go Cedric Gray and make sure you get one of the best linebackers in this class uh, who could theoretically start as a rookie um, over Devondre Campbell, potentially. I think Cedric Gray has that much potential. Braden Fisk um, at... Uh, 63 isn't necessarily a bad value. You could also go Cole Bishop at safety. You got offensive guard, Christian Mahogany. I like Christian Mahogany. Uh, Jalen McMillan is slept on. So what are you guys thinking here in regards to how this board is playing out? Um, I feel like, again, if you're looking ahead, linebacker could be a, a position that fills two holes. It fills a need and it fills the BPA model where he would be a phenomenal player. Um, it looks like. Just taking a look at the board, how it played out since we went. Um, I saw Justin ask about Trice. I'm not seeing Trice. He could. He's a guy that I like. Maybe we can focus. I think we're going to get a good player at 94. So Trice might be in that category, but let's take a look. Uh, I'm not seeing Trice. Hmm. Not seeing him at all, unless I'm just completely missing him. Um, let's see. I think... Because we went defensive tackle and we got one of the better defensive tackles in this draft, I think we stay on that side of the football. I mean, when, again, when you look at the 49ers offense as it stands currently, they're returning every starter. Every starter that went to the Super Bowl is back. 
So the defense was the thing. If I think if people forget how much we talked about the defense last year. And I think with that being the case, and again, you're balancing you're balancing BPA and need. If you go, if you take that balance, you might you might hit on Cedric Gray right here. Um, this guy is a phenomenal athlete. He is going to be able to come downhill. He he feels like he fits he fits the mold of a 49ers linebacker. Um, you know, typically they like the converted safeties, but one of the things that I loved about him was that he was actually an offensive player uh, coming out of high school. Like he was being recruited as both a linebacker and a wide receiver. And uh, North Carolina was the only school who looked at him, offered him a power five conference as, and they offered him as a linebacker. So that's where he decided to go play. Um, I think he has a, t he has high upside athleticism, versatility. Um, he's, he's an explosive player. So I think with the 49ers losing, um, Dre Greenlaw and Dre Greenlaw, um, you know, potential future contract situation, uh, the need for a legitimate LB three. I'm going to go gray here. And again, I have, I haven't done a PFF PFN, uh, mock in a while. So it feels like they updated the board since the last time I picked. Um, do I like any of these trades? No, I do not. So that means we have been able to address. We have defensive tackle linebacker. So there is going to be a sub section of the fan base who already is going to hate this mock draft because there's no <laughs> there's no offensive linemen. Where are the offensive linemen? I can already feel people screaming at me because I think it's just been so ingrained that offensive line is such a massive need. But again, when I say the 49ers are returning the same offensive line that <laughs> – that took them to the Super Bowl. Now that doesn't mean they can't improve. That doesn't mean they can't get better, but I think it does allow them a little bit of flexibility to be able to make some other moves. But with that being said, that doesn't mean they can't potentially find a guy that could be a development guy. And maybe, maybe, actually uh do something of value so this one is challenging because there's two routes i think i could go here i think i could go cornerback and i think i could get a very quality cornerback right here or i could go with i would say probably one of the better developmental offensive tackles in this class. So I'm just looking to see how the board is going to play out, kind of see who's available. So I feel that if you want to go tackle, this might be the spot, just based on how the board's fallen. 
I think if you really want to go developmental high upside, Kieran, uh, a mega to G, <laughs> probably butchered that, would be a good option right here. I think you could definitely go developmental 6'5". Um, again, he has prototypical size, moves very well. Uh, the mobility is definitely there, and I think that's one of the things that you're looking for. Um, hey, if you love, if you love arm length, this guy is in the 92nd percentile. So this guy could definitely be an option. He's a guy that I would definitely think about taking right here. Another guy that I would think about taking right here is Mike uh, Sane. Sane Restrill to come in and be a nickel cornerback. So the San Francisco 49ers could absolutely get this guy, plug him in, and he could then kick out uh, Diamador, that is, could kick out to the outside, and you could put Mike um, in the slot. I think this is a guy who's been building up steam as of late. And could definitely be a quality option at cornerback. You also have Josh Newton, um, Blake Fisher. Um, I have not watched Blake Fisher, so I'm going to put that out there. Hard for me. I've seen a little bit of glaze at the Senior Bowl. Um, so it's hard for me to go with Fisher just simply for the simple fact that I, I just have not watched him yet. But. I think understanding kind of how the board is going to fall, I got to make the decision and I got to go offensive line here. I think this is the value is there. I think it fits. I think the upside is there. And I think getting Kieran right here would be a great developmental prospect that could challenge. And then that pushes us to pick 124. And then now we have some options. We could potentially go tight end. We could go edge. We could go wide receiver. We could go running back. There's some tight ends. You got Theo Johnson right here. You got Jared Wiley available. So if you wanted to punt on tight end, you're actually in a good spot. And as we know, the 49ers are also got a couple picks stacked right here. So we can go in a bunch of different routes. So let's take a look. Ooh, because of the way the board is stacking and because of the options that I have currently. Ooh, we could get. I see a couple guys that I would like to take right here. Let me let me go a little bit further down the list. Ooh. Okay, okay. I'm seeing the vision. So based on the current picks, D tackle, linebacker, offensive tackle. I think I'm gonna have to go back to the well. I think I'm gonna have to go back to the well and get my guy i can't i can't let him slide i gotta go get mason mccormick man mason mccormick i see him as uh i see him as a, a he can play guard but i just something about him makes me feel like he could be a center right here and i mean this guy tests through the roofs but he's an absolute mauler he can dig out defensive tackles i'm not scared of the small school I think this guy is one of the more underrated offensive line prospects um, in regards to interior guys in this class. Um, I've had my eye on him for a while. And I feel like if you can actually go back to back Kieran and Mason, both small school prospect guys, which they're going to get the developmental tag put on them. But these are two high upside individuals that could develop. 
um, and maybe see some playing time this year. But you're not shooting yourself in the foot if they don't because you're getting a likely day one starter in Byron Murphy, a defensive tackle, and you're getting Cedric Gray, who could be your day one starting linebacker uh, with the, you know, issues to um, our guy, Dre Greenlaw. So that gives us tons of flexibility now. We got 132 and 135. We got tight ends. We got wide receivers. I feel like we go a little skill position here. We even have uh, Smith Wade, who I like. Cowing, I like. Um, there, J- Jonah Ellis, Edge. You want to get a little, little spicy with some Edge? Jonah Ellis is an option. People want to go the legacy route. You could go McCaffrey, um, Isaac, uh, who I. There's reports saying that Isaac, the 49ers have a third round grade on Isaac. Elijah Jones. I love Elijah Jones. I'm going to, I'm going to actually aim. So this is what I'm looking like. So I'm looking at my board. I'm going to target Elijah Jones at 176. So that's going to take me off cornerback. So, because I I think Elijah Jones is a quality cornerback, him being ranked 166, I think is way too low. Um, I I took him, I took him either in the third or fourth round or one of my last mocks. Like that's how much I like him. Uh, so based on this board, I'm gonna push it, try to get value here. And there's also I saw someone in the chat talking about. Uh, Mo Kamara, you can also push that value. And you also have Tip Ryman. That's another value that I think you can push. So I'm looking at tight end, potentially edge, and cornerback at values at 176, one at 211, and 215. So that means with these picks, I can get a little spicy. And I'm going to go with my favorite running back in this class. Yeah, you heard me. I said running back, baby. Yeah, I want Jalen Wright running back out of Tennessee. Oh, yeah, I can I can hear the grumbling now. Oh, he went running back. Yep. Yep. Um. I think the 49ers are interested. I mean, you think about it, man. The 49ers took two running backs in the third round in the last two drafts, and they are not on this roster. And you have Elijah Mitchell, who's going to be a free agent. Jordan Mason's going to be a free agent. They need someone that they can rely on. And Jalen Wright is a dog. We we need more people talking about, talking about him because – I think he is a quality back. Um, I think he's an all-around back, and I think he would fit perfectly, perfectly with what the 49ers are cooking with. So we get a guy that we could put right in there. My guy says Jalen Wright straight to Kyle's doghouse. (laughs) I'm for it. But now that gives us some options here. But, oh, did he go? Ooh, see, I was going to try to potentially go Jalen Wright, Jamari Thrash. Um, He's a very crisp route runner. This is Justin's guy. I was going to try to get him at 135. The Bills take him off the board, so we have to pivot a little bit that could put tight in if we want to go theo johnson could be here i feel like i'm good on o-line or we could go cowing oh we could spice it up go cowing get a dope dope slot or we could go edge Ooh, let me look at my what we got so we got to run on offensive players. 
based on how the board's playing out. Ooh. Jonah Ellis is intriguing me right here. Yes, he is. He is intriguing. Yes. I think, yep, I'm going Jonah Ellis right here. So based on this board might be considered a little bit of a reach, but based on based on being able to get a guy who's a little bit more compact but still has first really good first step get off, hand swipes, hand, he's got the moves to be able to beat tackles off the edge. Um, that value to me is, is a good value. Um, so I like Jonah Ellis right there. Let's see if any of the guys that we wanted fell. Oh, the Rams sniped me. The Rams sniped me and took my guy. At 170, you son of a gun. See, this is this is the hard part. Like you have this lot, you're like, I think, I think I'll be able to get my guy. And then the Rams snipe me. Oh, one pick ahead. You son of a gun. And Mo Mo Kamara goes to the Chiefs. Wow. Wow. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. So now we got to pivot a little bit here. And so with that, ooh, I don't want to reach now. I don't want to reach for tip. I, I, I do want to. I do want to come home with tip, but I don't know if I'm ready to take. I'm not going to finish that sentence. Ooh. Sione is so low on these boards. I don't know why. He should be higher. This guy should be higher. Um, Let's see. What else do we got? So who oh, they sniped me? They snapped me. Oh, I might have to reach a little bit just based on the board, how it's playing out. I would either go, I would either go Sione, or I would either go Tip. And my my thoughts are that if I skip on tip, I'm gonna lose out on the tight ends that I want. And he could go. I don't know if I can make that that move. I think I gotta go. I think I gotta go. So I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna get tip right. You get the best blocking tight end in the NFL super late. He has some shades of George Kittle. I don't think he's as natural of an athlete as George Kittle, um, but he's definitely the best blocking tight end in this class, and we know the 49ers value that very much so. Um, so I got to go tip. Got to take him a little bit early, but you still have Sione there. Which again, it's really hard to pass on him. But we don't have a cornerback either. So I have an idea on who I'm going to go at corner. It's definitely going to be a later, later guy, a little bit more developmental. But I think based on the value, where we're at, I can't pass it up. We got two Utah defenders, baby. We're Utah West. Now on the San Francisco 49ers. 
So, okay, okay. Now we got some flyer picks. Oh, there he is. I might have to I might have to just go go where I feel comfortable. Darius uh we don't need a linebacker. We want linebacker Gabriel Murphy. He is like top 100 on PFF's board and he is 250 on PFN's board. That's a wild wild difference in how these this these simulators have these guys ranked. Um, we don't need to go quarterback because Kellen Mon is here to save the day. So we got that going for us. Just taking a look at what we got. So I think I think I'm gonna have to go where I feel safe and where I feel comfortable. And we haven't addressed this position yet in the draft. Give me some Josh Cephas. The Josh Cephas hive is buzzing. And hopefully my guy that I wanted slides, but based on how things are going, probably not. Oh, there he goes. I was going to see if we could get DeCamerion Richardson, sub 4-4 guy. 49ers have shown interest in him, met with him at the Combine. He goes, sad day. Sad day. Would have loved him on the squad. But we have to pivot. So let's see where else we can go here. Let's look through the leftovers of what we have. Uh, there's really not. Oh, name value alone. I should pick this guy up. But I have heard of him. He's coming from... The CFL. Let me do just a little. I want to see. I want to see some some examples. What does this guy got? Okay. So he participated in the East West Shrine game. Ooh. That's not a bad play. And I think he's going up against Cephas right here. Ooh. Okay. I'm going here. I'll show you what I was looking at in a second. So take a look at this guy. We'll do a review of the draft here in a second. But so right here is Stiggers, Qu Quantrez, Quantez. Nice PBU there. And then comes back with another one. I'm pretty sure that's Cephas, who we just took right before him. Hey, I'll take it. I'll take a late round flyer on a CFL kid. I'll take it. So let's take a look at the hole that we just got, shall we? We have... So this is our draft. I guess my draft. Um, we went Byron Murphy. So Byron Murphy fell. Wasn't anticipating that to happen. So because Byron falls, 
you get one of the better defensive tackles in this class at 31. I think that is a plug and play. Just boom. You get a guy who could definitely be an impact player next to Hargrave, anchor that defensive line, come play in the zero. I like it. I like it. Cedric Gray, he's gone. I I have selected him at 94. I've selected him at multiple spots, but the value here, I wanted it. I took it. And so we kicked offensive line down a little bit. And so I still got a tackle. I, I got one of the more higher upside uh, guys uh, in Kieran out of Yale who has time to develop and I think could be a potential option. We'll see. Uh, but I do like Mason McCormick. I think he's a guy who could uh, definitely push at center. Um, at minimum, could be a guy of the future. We go running back, Jalen Wright. Uh, I Jalen Wright's my one of my favorite running backs in this class so far. So you, you get a, a guy who's got speed, who's got physical ability, good cuts, good vision. You bring him through. You get Jonah Ellis to put on that defensive line as well to, to rush the passer. You get Tip Ryman to come in and blocking his tail off. The Charlie Warner route. Sione Vaikai, uh, again, just feels uh, he feels like he's going to be going around this area, like 122, 130, whatever. I got Cephas and Quantes. Um, I don't love, like I said, I haven't done a PFN mock in a minute. And it feels like the the board, I don't know. I, I took it how it came, and this is what we landed with. Um, I would be fine if you switched kind of offensive tackle at 31. You want DT at 94. I think that could definitely be an option, or you could just flop those. But again, Byron Murphy fell. He was there. We We caught him with open arms. Um, depending on what draft sites you use um, on this particular site uh, that I like to use quite a bit, they have Byron Murphy as the fourth uh, ranked defensive lineman, including edge players. So they have Byron Murphy ahead of Chop Robinson, Darius Robinson, Tavondre Sweat, Cress Jenkins. Uh, Brayden Fr uh, Fisk, all those guys. So you're still getting um, a guy to anchor the class um, on the defensive side of the football, which I do think the 49ers would be interested in. So I would, if I had to grade this, you can grade this one in the chat. If I had to grade this one, I'd give it a, a B-ish, B minus. Uh, I think it needs a little tweaking. I think it needs a little work. I think I need to I think I need to practice the board a little bit more. But uh eh, it's a B. Eh, B minus. Um, you still able to get the offensive line. Um, and you get some impact players on defense. I could see Tip contributing. I could see Jalen Wright. Eh, I can't see Jalen Wright contributing right away. Um, yeah, B, B minus, C plus. I'll take it. It's a it's okay draft. It's not definitely not one of my favorites, but hey, it's a live draft. Take it as it falls, baby. 
So that's what we got. That's how it goes. Um, I I like the idea of trading down and getting Morgan. Like I think I think I think everyone. So you know when you do take a look at like guys like Daniel Jeremiah and and um, Nagy with the Senior Bowl, they both talk about Jordan Morgan as a starting tackle. Like, I think everyone is in the mindset that Jordan Morgan is going to be a starting tackle in the NFL. But I think the, the game that you're playing is where can you take him? Like, where do you get the value? I feel like you, I think because he's not, I think he's a really good tackle. I don't think he does anything like specifically elite but he's just really good at a lot of different things i think the the consideration is morgan is going to be a starter but i do think you could get some value on morgan um if you wanted to trade back a couple picks maybe pick up some mid-round picks and you and you really then i i did i did a very i posed one of those trades on um on bleach report today where we did a trade back i can even i'll pull it up so this was the this was my galaxy brain trade where it was basically twofold where you take 31 you drop back to 39 with the panthers panthers don't have a first round pick so they could be motivated. Now, if you look, 39, 101, and 141 is a little bit more value according to the chart for 31. But I think you could get a little bit more value out of a team trying to get into the first. And then so you get an addition. You move back to 39. You get 101, 141. You then package 63, the 101 that you just got, and you can even throw two sixth in there to pop up and go to pick 49. And then you could you could take a shot at um, a really good prospect in the top 50. Still get Morgan, then trade up, get us get a still get a quality guy. In the top 50, I could totally see the 49ers wheeling and dealing like that. Um, does that mean they're going to? I don't really know. Um, so, and this is absolutely part of it. If you're selling that 31st pick, you're also selling the fifth year option. You're selling that, that nugget, that carrot, that not only are you picking here in the first, but you are able to have the advantage of the fifth year option, which is totally team friendly. It is not, it is not player friendly to have the fifth year option. Um, so teams could see value in that. A team like Carolina could want that. They could see a wide receiver that's sliding that they want to ensure they get and get the option of having the fifth year so that's why I have the value tilted a little bit more for what the Panthers were giving up. Um, because obviously if you add 510, 96, and 36, it exceeds 600. But uh, again, I, I have a little bit of a little bit of a hiked price for the fifth year option. So this could be an option. Uh, 49ers have a lot of options. So we'll see. We'll see what they do. Uh, but yeah, we're close. We're close. Three weeks? About three weeks? Yeah, I think we're about three weeks. Three weeks away. And if there's anything that I've learned about the NFL draft and about being about this far away, 
is we see some random risers. We see some guys rise. We see some guys fall. Again, right now we're going off a lot of media boards. It's also very important to understand that the media boards rarely match actual NFL boards. Now, there's they're within range. I would say Daniel Jeremiah is consistently the most on point, I would say, with his rankings. Um, but we're going to see some guys slide into the first that we were not expecting. We're going to see guys that we totally thought were top 20, top 25 locks slide out. So, hey, the 49ers have options to move as they see fit. Uh, oh, my, I mean, my guy right now is Faltanu. Um, a lot of people have him profiled at guard or center, but I think he could play tackle no problem. I really don't see an issue um, with him playing tackle. I think uh, his size actually benefits him a little bit uh, to be able to play tackle based on leverage, uh, his ability to move, uh, his ability to anchor. Um, I think I think Pautanu. I had like I said, I need to do some. I need to just. I need to do the work on the Notre Dame tackles. I need to do the work on the Penn State tackles. Um, I've watched Michigan's offensive line. I've watched a decent amount of Jordan Morgan. I've watched a lot of Rosengarten and Fautanu. I need to do Fuaga. I've done Latham. I've done Latham. Latham's really good. Um, he's definitely power, 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 power. I've done JC. Uh, I've done Powers Johnson. I've done Graham Barton. Um, I've done uh, some McCormick. Uh, I need, but there's there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of guys. I've done a. I've done some Mims. Um, I need to do more though. That's the hard part about this time of the year and being <laughs> being at the end of the Super Bowl is. You don't have like this natural ability to just space out like your tape study. You got to cram like it's literally you got to cram college tape. And like I'm just trying to get through all the offensive linemen right now. Cooper. Yep. Cooper. Um, but it's a good it's a good problem to have. Good problem to have because there's a lot of good offensive linemen. So we'll see how it all plays out. But uh, shout out to everyone for tapping in, joining in on the uh, live mock draft. We got a trophy, guys. We got a trophy. Look at this. It's... It's got some weight to it. Like if I threw this at your head, it would knock you out. Um, but this is the trophy that we got for winning the media bracket. Uh, shout out to Rob Stats Guerrera for hooking up the trophy. Little Mike, put that back here. With our uh, YouTube plaque. Um, shout out to all you guys who have supported voted um appreciate it man absolutely wild still even though again it's like it's a fun competition it's not serious or anything like that but the the fact that it, that you guys voted for me over some of the best 49ers content creators still wild to me and again uh just appreciative of the sourdough squad coming through Shout out to SDS again. Remember, the SDS is undefeated. We got a trophy to prove it. Let's go, baby. Uh, shout out to SDS. Shout out to all of you. Shout out to all you 49er fans. Uh, vibing and looking forward to the NFL draft. Appreciate all you guys, as always, for tapping in. 
I'm out for now. I think we got State of the Franchise tomorrow on a Wednesday. Let's go. Smash that like button if you haven't already. Love to see it.